The Sunday on Close Up, Senate lawmakers make some tough choices on the state budget from Medicaid expansion to combating the heroin epidemic. Difference of opinions remain on a number of flashpoints in Concord so far. Also this week brought calls for Congressman Frank Ginta's resignation, not only from Republican leaders, but also major New Hampshire newspapers. We'll find out how and why those calls were actually made. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Josh McKelvin. Amid the presidential primary race and the recent controversy surrounding Congressman Frank Ginta lately, it might be easy to overlook the budget wrangling that's taking place in Concord. But this week, important moves were made by the Senate Finance Committee on a number of different issues. Joining me for a progress report of sorts, Senate President Chuck Morse and setting, sitting in for Minority Leader Jeff Woodburn, Senator Andrew Hosmer. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Uh, Let's just kind of start with the, uh, your view of where things stand, uh, Senate President. We'll start with you. Just from 30,000 feet, how are things going so far? I think they're going great. I mean, we, it's a process. We're working our way through it. We probably have another five weeks in the process, and I think it's uh, moving right along. I think we're working to fund the needs of the citizens of the state of New Hampshire, and I think we're doing a good job. Senator Hosmer? I think we've made progress. Uh, uh, I think the House budget, as it was passed, probably set the bar a little low. So uh, we've made some improvements on that, which uh, I'm very pleased about. But I think there's an awful lot of work to, to go uh, to continue to build on, on the foundation from last session's budget that was a, a very good and responsible budget and um, really set priorities um, um, that are very important to this state. Well, when you say foundation, kind of uh, elaborate on that for me. Well, I think when we look at um, looking at uh, what's particularly important to this state is having a thriving economy. Uh, we took some steps there to stabilize um, uh, education to stabilize our mental health uh, system, to address um, uh, the New Hampshire Medicaid expansion, the New Hampshire Health Care Protection Act. It wasn't part of the budget. It came afterwards. Um, and, and I think that's a really good foundation um, to uh, look at this budget from. We took a couple of steps forward, and I'd like to keep moving forward as well. Uh, one of the things that took place this week uh, uh, is the carving out of, of Medicaid expansion. Why, why do you think that was important, at least in terms of uh, the majority of the Finance Committee? Yeah, as one of the authors of the legislation that moved forward with private health insurance policies, um, that's in place and it's in place till January of 2017. And we all believed when we were building that legislation that we needed to come back and review it and review the federal government's position on, on where they were going with health care. And I think that's what we'll do in 2016. We've made that clear. Is, is that just more the, sa the safer thing to do to carve it out and let it stand alone rather than tie it to the state budget and examine it in 20, uh, when, when the sunset is up? I think it's the thing that the citizens expect from the legislature. They expect us to review these processes. You know, the federal government doesn't have a great track record of funding what they say they're going to do. We have private health insurance policies in place right now. Um, the actual program will be in place next year, but that's where we want it to head, and we want to make sure that that drives down, you know, people going to emergency rooms without insurance. It drives down the uncompensated care in the state of New Hampshire and provides people with the basic needs that they need. So I think we're getting there. Senator Hosmer, maybe a difference of opinion on this one. I think there is. I think what we do share is that the New Hampshire Health uh, Protection Program is working very well. And it was a collaborative effort between the governor, uh, the Senate, and, and Senate President Morse. Uh, but I think time is of the essence right now. Uh, the last budget wa uh, was, um, um, did a lot of great things. I think this budget right now is a frugal budget that the governor has produced. And it also uh, takes into consideration that if we want to have a strong economy going forward, Medicaid expansion is a critical part of this right now. There are 40,000 Granite Staters that have taken advantage of this program. And we realize it's a complex program, but we need a lot of time to make sure we have stability in the, in the markets so that these uh, Granite Staters can continue to have the coverage. Let me ask you about an issue. I mean, it's easy to get lost, lost in the numbers when, when you talk about uh, the important programs and services that the state of New Hampshire provides its citizens. But right now, one of the major issues facing this state, public safety, health-wise, is the heroin problem. Um, and do you think, it's obviously substance abuse treatment is a big part of that. Do you think that uh, the recognition is there, uh, Senator Morse, uh, among lawmakers realizing how big of a problem this is and what the state's role is in combating it? I certainly do. And, and I think the different debates right now are how to get to the end point of making sure we're doing effective use of our dollars that we have in New Hampshire. One of the things that the Senate did was fully fund the Department of Safety. We spent many hours making sure that that department was fully funded. 
when it comes to drug and alcohol, there's been a program that's been suspended every year since it's been put in place. I remember when Bill Leader, Bill Lieber put it in place that we wanted to make sure we fund this program because with liquor money and we put that in place in the Senate now. I mean the Senate has a habit of restoring items that were in budgets and I think that's what's going to be a great thing is to give the money to the people that are going to use it and have an effective program moving forward and that's what we're doing right now. Now, Senator Hosmer, your office put out a, a pretty scathing press release uh, this week when it came to the substance abuse treatment funding. Are you satisfied with where things stand now and where the discussion is headed with this? I'm not satisfied. Uh, I, I think the, the heroin crisis in this state um, is a real problem uh, for Granite Staters, for the communities that I represent, for the state as a whole. And I think we ought to have put all resources that we can towards this problem. The governor has recommended that we put about $9 million to substance abuse. The, the House is up to about 6.5. We still have almost $3 million to go to get to where I think we need to be to address this problem. Uh, and, and people are looking towards the Senate to to make sure that we do fully fund these services. It has a dramatic impact on our economy, on our Department of Safety, and, and I will say, we have funded the Department of Safety, and it's a better funding process, a better funding program than the House has proposed, but we're still cutting millions of dollars from the Department of Safety, and I do have concerns about that. Is, is the expertise there, though, for, for uh, lawmakers? I mean, I mean, this is a volunteer legislature, uh, and you all have your businesses and your jobs. Is the expertise there to know how to apply these dollars effectively? Where we're, ta we're talking about $9 million or $6 million or whatever the number is, particularly in the area of the heroin crisis. Oh, I think the expertise is there. I think the debate that happens in Concord is how to effectively use the dollars. I mean, I would disagree. I think the Senate put the money in the right buckets to make sure that we can effectively be on the streets and solving problems. I, I would rather do that than fund a person in an office. I think it's very important to put the money to work and get it going right now. And that's what the Senate did. I mean, as for the Department of Safety, the Department of Safety, we increased their budget by over $30 million. I mean, I think it was a very effective use of money to make sure that we had people on the street making sure that we combat this problem. And, and we've done that in this budget. I mean, we didn't take money away from them. We gave them a pretty good increase. Hey, do you believe, Senator Hosmer, there's a recognition on the part, I mean, the criticism is from a lot of members of the Republican Party is that oh, Democrats just want to throw money at every problem and money that they're quick to point out we don't have. No, I, I think that's uh, I think that uh, criticism is uh, is unfounded. Uh, quite frankly, the governor proposed a position within the governor's office to make sure that we had accountability when it comes to addressing our substance abuse program. That was opposed by uh, Republicans on the Senate Finance Committee. I fought to keep that in the budget because I think we need uh, collaboration among a, a number of departments. This isn't just a Department of Health and Human Services issue. It's a Department of Safety issue. It's an economic issue. It's a corrections issue. We need a point person there to make sure that we are investing funds and that we are managing to the goals that we all expect, which is, is confronting this problem. All right, and a lot of people do think that uh, it is the biggest problem facing the state right now, at least the most immediate. Let's uh, talk about rail for a moment. Obviously, that was a big deal that came out of the governor's budget when she talked about her, her endorsement for rail, and $4 million uh, was going to go towards studying the project. That's been taken out of the budget, or the capital budget, I will point that out. But. Um, I mean, did this ever really have a chance, Senator Morse? I mean, was there any appetite there to really seriously take a look at a rail project between Boston and, and Concord? No, I think the people have been very clear. They want us to do road work, and the Senate's done that. The, Senate, the Senate, through legislation that was proposed last year, is putting $29 million on the roads right now through this budget for the next two years. And on top of that, we restored the money to our local communities, which is about $11 million. I mean, I think we heard the communities. We want to do road work, and that's where we're putting our money right now. Yeah, your thoughts on the decision to take that out? Well, I think infrastructure is essential to having a strong and robust economy. We have put some money towards our roads and bridges, and I applaud the fact that we've returned this money uh, to, to the cities and towns that are depending on it. But part of infrastructure is the discussion of rail. When we see some of our biggest businesses, our high-tech businesses here in Manchester saying, this is essential for them to grow their business. The fact that we've taken it off the table is probably short-sighted. But uh, discussion is one thing. Is it a $4 million discussion at this point in time, given the, the economic climate, do you think? Well, I think we either spend less money now and get greater investment and, and greater returns in the future, or if we have to do this in the future, we 
we may find ourselves spending an awful lot more, and we may see the high-tech industry looking at other places around the country, which right now we can't afford to do. All right. Senator? Yeah, I think we made a decision. We were going to put the money to higher education, and we did in this budget. We wanted to make sure tuitions got frozen, and that's what we did in this budget. I, I think it's very important that we put the dollars to that, and that's where we put them. We only have a couple of minutes to go here, so I want to give you each a chance to weigh in. When this is all said and done, um, what kind of budget do you think we're looking at? What are you going to be able to point to, Senator Morrison, and say, you know what, uh, we did the right thing here, and here's why? Yeah, I think it was very important to go back and look at the needs of citizens. I mean, we, we put some very essential programs back in place this week for the disabled community, Meals on Wheels for our seniors. I, I think these programs are beneficial and they needed to be in place in this budget. Service Link we put back in place. We've done that. We've met the needs that the citizens are looking for. I do believe we need to drive this economy. I think it is all about jobs, and I think we need to go into next week and see where we stand. I do think we need to make sure that we're looking at our business climate and start talking about tax reductions. And I want to ask you uh, th this final question, Senator Hosmer. And yes, you're sitting next to the Senate president, and yes, the Republicans hold the majority, obviously, in the Senate. And people always criticize lawmakers for an inability to be able to talk or get along. Um, sure, you have difference of opinions, but how is the feeling? I mean, is there, is there a good dialogue taking place as, as you guys work very hard, clearly, to fashion a spending plan? I think there are some frustrations in, in the Democratic Party right now that we are not collaborating to the extent that we need to. One reason the last uh, budget was a, a unanimous budget in the Senate is because there was a good collaborative effort. And I think that everyone realizes that compromise is part of the package. And, and if we can compromise, if we can have open and frank discussions here, I think at the end of the day, uh, we're going to have a budget that's uh, a lot less like the House and more like the, the governor's. It's responsible and it makes investments in the critical things that uh, Granite Staters expect. Uh, you are the ranking member of the Senate, sir. So I'll give you the last word. Yeah, I think it's very important that we communicate together, and we've done that. I think it's, it's very important that the finance chair reach out to the other senators. She's done a fantastic job of doing that, and I think we'll continue debating. And it's worth pointing out, there's still a long way to go. I mean, we, <laughs> the budget process, well, bless all of you for all the work that you're doing. Thank Thanks you. for joining us this morning. Thank you. Appreciate it.